Hello everyone. I want to say a few words about the place of science and scientists in the debate about animal welfare. Scientists in general tend to stay away from political and ethical debates. But more and more political and ethical questions, especially in the 21st century, depend on scientific knowledge, on knowing the scientific facts and theories. Examples range from global warming to the rise of artificial intelligence and genetic engineering. You can have different opinions about these matters, but if you don't know the scientific facts, your opinions shouldn't count for much. Hence, scientists should, should accept greater political and ethical responsibility. They should know that in this context, silence is also a political statement. If scientists know something important, which is relevant to a current political debate, and they choose not to say it publicly, this is also an ethical choice. Of course, science cannot decide ethical questions. It's not the role of science. But science can decide factual questions. Science never tells us what is good. It can only tell us what is real, what is true. Unfortunately, far too many ethical discussions, especially about animals, get stuck on the level of facts. And science can therefore be very helpful in helping these discussions move forward. In the debate about the welfare of farm animals, such as cows and chickens and pigs, two key factual questions are, can animals suffer at all? And secondly, do animals suffer in practice? For example, do dairy cows suffer when they are separated from their calves? You often hear people who are engaged in these ethical and political discussions saying things such as, Cows cannot experience pain. Or oh, cows aren't sad when you separate them from their calves because they simply cannot experience sadness. This is a human emotion, and it's humanizing the cows to say that they can be sad. Or oh, some, sometimes people say, if you think that cows can experience pain, then what about lettuce? Maybe lettuce also experiences pain. So we shouldn't cut lettuce and we shouldn't eat lettuce. Such statements, which can often be heard in the debate about the welfare of animals, reflect scientific ignorance. There is certainly a place for different ethical views concerning our treatment of dairy cows, but only on the basis of scientific facts. People are entitled to have their own views, but they are not entitled to have their own facts. Consider the question, is it okay to inflict pain on cows in order to provide pleasure for human beings? You can have different ethical views about this question, but arguing that cows just cannot experience pain is no longer a legitimate part of the discussion, not in 2017. So as of 2017, to the best of our scientific understanding, what are the facts? So first and most important, the scientific understanding in 2017 is that all mammals and all birds and probably at least some reptiles and fish and other organisms are conscious, sentient beings. They all have the capacity to experience sensations and emotions. In contrast, we have absolutely no evidence and no scientific reason to think that lettuce or tomatoes can feel pain or can experience fear. Another important fact is that mammals and birds they can feel not just, you know, pain and pleasure, but they have a very complex world 
of sensations and emotions. Emotions are not something that God gave only Homo sapiens in order to write poetry or to appreciate music. Emotions is something that natural selection evolved in all mammals and other animals in order to make decisions in life. Take, for example, a baboon standing somewhere in the African savanna. And the baboon sees not far away that there is a tree with bananas on it, but there is also a lion nearby. And the baboon needs to make a decision whether to risk his life for the bananas or not. Should I run to the bananas and risk that the lion will eat me? Or should I run away? Now, how does the baboon make this kind of decision? In order to make a decision, the baboon needs to gather a lot of information about the situation. What is the distance to the bananas? How many bananas are there? Are there big or small? Are they green or ripe? The baboon also needs information about the lion. How far is the lion? How big is the lion? Is the lion asleep or awake? The baboon needs information about himself. How fast can I run? How hungry I am? The baboon needs to take all these pieces of information, analyze them, and within a split second, make a decision. Now, how does the baboon do it? The baboon does not take out a pen and a piece of paper and a calculator and starts making calculations. No, what we call sensations and emotions are the mechanism that natural selection gave all mammals, humans and baboons, to make such decisions. The senses of the baboon the sight, the smells, the, 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 voice, the, the, the voices. Within a split second, the baboon will experience a storm of sensations. And the result of all these information coming together will be an emotion. If it's too risky, the baboon will feel fear. If it's, it's a good idea, the baboon will feel courage. His, his chest will puff up. All his hair will stand, he will feel, yes, I can do it, and he will run to the bananas. Emotions like fear and courage, they are not unique to human beings. They are common to all mammals and probably to many other animals because they are practical tools for animals to make decisions. It is, of course, likely that some emotions are unique to humans. For example, guilt, as far as we know, might be an emotion which only humans have and not baboons or cows or chickens. It is also likely, of course, that there are some other emotions that are unique, say, to whales and that humans don't have these emotions and we just have no idea what they are. However, the basic emotions, like fear, are probably common to all mammals and birds. Another very important and common emotion is motherly love, the bond between mother and offspring. Without a strong emotional bond between mother and offspring, no mammal can survive and reproduce. Whether you are a giraffe or a baboon or a dolphin or a mouse, if there is no bond between the mother and the offspring, in the case of mammals, the offspring will not survive because they depend on the milk and on the care of the mother for at least a few weeks, if not months and years. Uh, yet even though science now tells us very clearly that this emotion of mother-offspring bond is common to all mammals, we ignore it outside the scientific context, in the context of industrial farming. The entire dairy industry is built on breaking this most basic bond of the mammal kingdom, 
the bond between mother and offspring. A cow will not give milk unless you first get her pregnant and it gives birth to a small calf. But then if you allow the calf to stick around and drink the milk, you won't have anything for the dairy industry. So the entire dairy industry is built on getting cows pregnant and then when they give birth, separating the mother from the offspring, usually uh, fattening up the calves and slaughtering them and milking the cow until she dries up and then you get her pregnant again and start another cycle. Uh, to the best of our understanding, this is likely to cause a lot of misery, a lot of emotional pain to both the mother and the offspring. So another fact that science now supports is that when we wish to understand, when we examine the condition of farm animals, we should take into account not only their basic material needs, like the need for food or the need for water, we should also take into account emotional and social needs. You can argue, of course, to what extent the emotional, the emotional and social needs of cows and chickens are fulfilled in industrial farming. But you just cannot argue that cows and chickens have absolutely no emotional and social needs at all. Finally, there are good scientific reasons to think that the emotional and social needs of farm animals are systematically ignored and frustrated in industrial farms. Take, for example, the social need to play, which is, again, common to many young mammals, such as human children and puppies and calves. The urge to play has very deep evolutionary roots. In social animals, like wild cattle, animals that live in groups, play is a vital method for the young members of society to learn the rules of conduct, how to fight, how to make peace, how to cooperate, how to court. If a young calf, for some genetic reason, was born, say, without the urge, without the desire to play, this calf will not learn the rules of the cattle society and will not be able to survive and reproduce, at least not in the wild. Domesticated cattle, of course, do not need all that because humans provide them with food, humans protect them from dangers, and humans use artificial technology to control reproduction. But an emotional or social urge like playing the developed in the wild doesn't disappear in domesticated animals. It is still there. The animals still feel it. It's the same with humans. Why, for example, do we gorge on chocolate when it's not good for us? Because we are still driven by desires, by emotions, by urges that evolved hundreds of thousands of years ago in the African savannah. When it comes to humans, we indulge our desires and urges, even if they are unnecessary today. But when it comes to animals, we tend to ignore them. And this causes tremendous suffering to the animals. A calf, which is separated from his mother and from other calves, and is locked in a small cage without any opportunity to play, will be extremely miserable just as a child or a puppy will be extremely miserable under such conditions. And yet this is the fate of millions upon millions of calves every day across the world. So to conclude, I hope scientists will take a far more active part in the ethical and political discussion about the welfare of animals. They can't decide 
the ethical questions, but they should clarify the facts, and they should lay to rest ignorant claims, such as cows can't, cannot feel pain, or other animals don't have emotions, only humans have emotions. Scientists who know the facts, but choose to remain silent, should know that they are not being neutral. Sil silence in the face of misery is an extreme and very unfortunate ethical choice. Thank you.